what science is. Every human being is a curious and inquisitive person. And in the biological term, we say animals, including you. Isn't it? Good. I know you agree with me that you are also an animal. This behavior is even more striking in children. They are more curious than even adults. Since creation, man has always sought to understand and sometimes explain some of the happenings around him. For example, what causes the formation of rainbow in the skies? What causes day and night? What makes the aeroplane fly in the sky like a bird? Thus, the curious active mind is always searching to know more about the things around him. The quest for answers to these endless questions can take one or two approaches. One, supernatural explanations, which include beliefs, dogmas, and superstitions. Superstitions are an irrational fear of the unknown coming from beliefs which are not based on reasons or facts, but on old ideas about luck or magic. But the question is, is this science? I hope you guessed rightly. That is certainly not science. What then is science? Before we delve into what science is, let's look at what you should be able to achieve at the end of this lesson. By the end of this session, you should be able to, one, explain the meaning of science. Two, explain what the scientific method is. Three, state the processes of the scientific method. Four, explain the following terms. Independent variable, dependent variable, and control. But before we start today's lesson, cast your mind back to some of the things you treated at the JHS level that related to science. Calculating the volume of water using different measuring cylinders, comparing the masses of different objects such as a large rectangular foam, a stone, or a small box. Now the question is, what is science? Science is a continuous process of investigating, examining, exploring, and experimentation or testing in order to widen your understanding of the natural world. Another school of thought also defines science as a process by which people accumulate knowledge and skills in which they can place a high and often measurable degree of confidence. Simply put, science is an organized body of knowledge through inquiry. Inquiry is the act of seeking for information. How do scientists make inquiry? Now let's focus on how scientists work. Conducting a scientific investigation or inquiry involves a series of steps, what we refer to as the scientific method. The scientific methods are systematic approach of gathering observable, empirical, or measurable evidence that are critically evaluated to arrive at a solution to a problem. Now let's look at the very first step, which is observation. The scientific approach seeks to provide answers to questions through observation. Observation means looking at things yourself, making use of your sense organs of sight, touch, hearing, taste, and smell. You observe your body, surroundings, classroom, playing field, etc., using these senses. Your observation may take 
either of two forms. That is quantitative, that is involving measurements, or qualitative or descriptive. What follows observation is to pose a clear question or stating the problem. Stating a question to the activity is the second step to embark on doing this method. The question can be in the form of why, where, how, what, who, and so on. For example, why do fruits, for example, mango, fall down straight to the earth and not up? See to it that the question you pose is clear and precise. Secondly, see to it that it makes sense pertaining to what you already know about the subject. For example, can I run a marathon race faster when I eat a big bowl of kenke the night before the race or drink tea the morning of the race? What follows after the question is a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a proposed scientific explanation or an intelligent guess for a set of observations. It is an educated guess. We set out to prove or disprove the hypothesis. Hypotheses are generated using prior knowledge, logical inference, and informed creative imagination. Scientific hypotheses must be designed in a way that enables them to be tested. For example, the time it takes to run a marathon is improved by consuming a large quantity of carbohydrates before a race. The fourth step in conducting a scientific investigation is experimentation. An experiment is a test that is used to eliminate one or more of the possible hypotheses until a hypothesis remains. The experiment is the cornerstone in the scientific approach to gaining deeper understanding about the physical world. A scientific experiment involves controls or subjects that are not tested during the investigation. In this way, a scientist limits the factors or variables that can cause the result of the investigation to differ. The controlled variable answers the question of what do I keep the same? You would have to run a marathon without eating kinky the night before or drinking tea the morning of the race. Meaning, the kinky and the tea are the variables which need not to be tested. A variable is a factor that can change over the course of an experiment. The variable which is deliberately changed is called the manipulative variable or the independent variable. The independent variable answers the question, what do I change? Now from the question, can I run a marathon race faster when I eat a big bowl of kinky the night before the race or drink tea the morning of the race? The independent variable is the consumption of Kinky. The variable that is observed and changes in response to the manipulative variable is called the responding variable or the dependent variable. The dependent variable answers the question, what do I observe? The dependent variable is how fast you run the race. The truth is, how fast you run depends on the kinky, which is the independent variable. So how fast you run is dependent variable. If you eat a big bowl of kinky 
at 7 p.m. the night before the race. But then get up the next morning and drink two cups of tea before you head to the starting line, your experiment becomes invalid. The question is, why? This is because by drinking tea, you introduce a second independent variable. And therefore, you will not know whether the fast race time is due to the kinke you ate the night before the race or the tea you took in the morning before the race. Note that experiments can only have one independent variable at a time. If you want to know the effect of tea on your race time, you would have to design a second experiment. This experiment would have the hypothesis consuming tea the morning of a marathon improves running time. Now in summary, today's lesson was on nature of science. You learned that science is a continuous process of investigating and experimentation in order to widen an individual's understanding of the natural world. We also learned how scientists work by using a systematic approach of gathering observable, empirical, and measurable evidence that are critically evaluated to arrive at a solution to a problem, which is the scientific method. That is, observation, posing a question, formulating a hypothesis, and experimentation. We looked at the meaning of control, a variable, an independent variable, and a dependent variable. All too soon our time is up, but I believe you've learned something in this session. I want you to control thinking and dreaming about science. Solve the subsequent questions that follow and let me know your feedback. I will see you some other time. Have a nice day.